Hi, this is Ingvar and I have more games from you from the World Blitz Championship. And once again we have Magnus Carlsen. And this is a marquee matchup. He's playing uh, Vladislav Artemiev from Russia. And you might not have heard of him, but you best believe he's a good player. He is, well, was before this tournament rated number two in the world in Blitz. In the high 2800s. He had a fantastic... Uh, Blitz tournament before the World Championship, which he won. So he was rated number two in the world on the live rating list. But now, currently, after this tournament, he is number five. But let's see. Carlsen had the white pieces. He opened with d4, c4, g6. So black fianchette to his bishop. He wants to play either the king's Indian or the Grunfeld, depending on where he puts his d-pawn. And white answers with a fianchetto of his own. So both sides fianchetto their bishops. And after me, of course, for d5, the Grunfeld. So we have a fianchetto Grunfeld variation. Knight b6. Preemptively getting out of the e4 push. Knight c3. Knight c6. Everything is quite normal here. e3. You have to defend the pawn. And now both sides castle. Bishop d7 by black b3 and Artemiev has even played this before in 2017 and yep he repeated this game played queen c8 this is the b2 bishop h3 by Artemiev still following his game against uh, Lord, Par Lord Parisan again <laughs> who I think is from Iran queen e2 and Carlson now deviates from the aforementioned game so Artemio is now on his own he takes on d2 so logical plan by black to put the bishop on d7 and the queen on c8 to exchange the light squared bishops softening up white's king side a little bit but black doesn't really have pieces to attack him there so he goes a5 for the queen side but eliminating this light squared bishop also means that you reduce the pressure that the white potentially has on your queen side so play continues, knight e4, this knight is eyeing a very juicy square here on c5, a4, trying to activate the rook and also softening up white's queenside pawns, and we'll see this pay dividends later in the game, rook a to c1 from Carlsen, half open file, potential weakness, so he goes there with his rook, rook to d8, rook fd1, the rook is clearly more useful on d1 than f1 and blitz is often about just playing useful moves and then seeing what your opponent does now we see an unusual maneuver by Artemio. he places rook to d5 intending to put it on h5 in some cases he might put it on a5 as well but an unusual rook lift and after h3 he plays rook h5 now this prompts g4 from Carlsen and Artemio's idea is that White has weakened this king side a bit, and maybe he can attack it later, perhaps with h5. But now, knight c5 by Carlsen. And this allows black to take on b3. And play rook a2. And here, Carlsen pretty quickly played uh, rook a1. And after we have to hook on a1. Here, however, we have another bad blunder by Carlsen not as bad as the one against uh, Akopian but very close black to play here and once you know it's there it's fairly obvious and I was quite impressed because I had seen this motive when watching it live and, and I thought Carlsen would play a rook to the second right but he played rook a1 immediately and he even fooled me I'm like oh rook a1 and, and, but then no he, he, he could have taken a b2 and once you take on b2 with the queen, now there's a pin on this pawn. And black has two pieces for the rook. An excellent position, and this is just close to winning for black. I mean, black can, uh, white can fight on, but but uh, black should just win here. So, yeah, sometimes you need a bit of luck. 
and sometimes it's good to be the world champion people just trust your moves and Artemiev did in this case he took on a1 so now Carlson is back in the driver's seat it's a slightly better position probably but black should be close to equal here 97 trying to exchange off the active knight but now Carlson plays e4 and gets a bit of, bit of momentum going in the center with his pawns rook goes back to d6 and now he takes on d7 maybe he should have taken with a queen now but he takes with a rook and Carlson keeps pushing forward with d5 pushing this knight back and forcing the exchange of the black squared bishop which in turn we can black kingside so knight b8 Carlson took on g7 and queen b2 check now check in itself is harmless but white has somewhat improved the prospects of his queen king g8 and rook a1 now this rook is eyeing a8 putting some pressure on black putting him in a pin giving him some bad pieces but Artemiev realizes this and plays rook d6 his plan is to play rook a6 so if Carlson were to play rook a8 he will play rook a6 forcing the trade of rooks Carlson continues to try and press he plays b4 maybe he wants to play b5 when the rook a8 idea is back on the cards and now Artemiev uses uh, the time to break in the center with e6 Carlson takes and black is very close to being equal here but Carlson keeps on presenting these little problems okay now his pawn is attacked but he answers it with attack with an attack of his own attacking the rook rook goes to a6 and now a nice vision soak by Carlson in between move queen b3 but of course this rook can't be taken because we have queen takes f7 so after me defense and now rook d1 another nice move always putting little problems uh, on the table for his opponent if black was careless now and played a move like h6 white wins immediately and how rook d8 wins immediately you can't take the rook because of queen takes f7 and checkmate Artemiev saw this and played rook d6 but now typical Carlsen goes for the slightly better endgame he took on d6 and now we can say that black has just slightly weaker pawns that Carlsen can attack and this is enough for Carlsen to play for a win he thinks he plays queen d5 attacking both the pawns queen e7 defending them both and we still have this pressure on f7 so nice pressure in the endgame for, for white here b5 this is playing against the knight which now has neither a6 nor c6 available my, my arrows look a bit drunken now and knight to uh, d7 hangs the b7 pawn so some problems here for black he goes for b6 now queen a8 queen g7 protecting the knight and knight a3 now he wants to redirect the knight knight d4 looks like a good square for the knight king g7 and now he swings the queen back around queen a1 king back and queen f6 so constantly small problems for black you would like to develop the knight but now if we do that we pin it and we're still pressuring this and knight g5 is a threat again so you have to be careful After me, have played queen to d7, knight d4 by Carlsen, queen e8, and now Carlsen took on d6, but then showed some hesitation after black took on e4. Uh, I have a hard time, hard time believing he missed this, but he played knight f3 now. However, f3 would have been a very strong move, and it was uncharacteristic of Carlsen to miss this because he's covering all the jacks now with the knight. And he's still attacking the knight on b8. So black would have to defend it and 
well that's hard to do queen e8 drops the b6 pawn and if you go to b7 this knight c6 move is really hard to deal with and this might even be lost so a missed chance there from Carlson, but knight f3 still keeps uh, a better position for white it's not much but there's still this nagging pressure and of course like always Carlson had the time match and now another typical Carlson motif pushing the 8th pawn Harry <laughs> did that in a few other games knight d7 queen c6 and black can't exchange here because the c the b pawn that becomes a c pawn will be uh, too dangerous queen a7 queen check by Carlsen goes back to c3 and now pushing the 8th pawn threatening to put it on h6 introducing a mate threat on g7 after we have took Carlsen took back and now h6 not allowing white to go h6 but now you have two weaknesses the principle of two weaknesses Carlsen immediately attacks h6 after king h7, knight d4, the knight is going to f5 to further pressure this weakness. I have to give it to Artemiev, he's still defending tremendously. He plays knight c5 and he wants to put the knight on e6. He blocks the diagonal and the knight stands quite well here on e6 for defensive purposes. He's still holding on. But now queen c1 by Carlsen. And it's very hard to protect this pawn. Artemia first plays queen b7, which is actually a good move after Carlsen's f3. And now he could have stayed in the game. Um, he has to sacrifice a pawn, but if he plays queen c7, Carlsen takes the pawn. White's king is a little weak. I mean, already the threat is queen c2 takes f5. And like we mentioned earlier, this knight is doing a great job of, of protecting important squares on the king side. White is not mating immediately, he has to be careful, and black might have some perpetual uh, opportunities. Instead, the game losing blunder by Artemir, he plays knight g5, trying to block the queen from taking on h6, but this allows the queen to go back to c6. The double attack, threatening the exchange of queens, and the pawn on h6. And this is a dilemma, you can't move the queen because when I take an h6, the knight will hang, so you have to exchange. But unfortunately for Artemia, this is completely losing. The c pawn is too dangerous, and the black king is tied down to the h6 pawn. So white simply walks his king over. He will control this b pawn and pick it up. King comes over, and here Artemia gives up the h pawn, but Carson doesn't even take it immediately. King c3. And. Now he finally takes on h6, and this means that this king can't go too far away because of this pawn. So the king goes back, but king c5, knight d4. This knight is taking the pawn next, and this is completely winning position for white. And yet another squeeze for Magnus Carlsen, who with his win moved an inch closer to gaining the World Blitz Championship once again. And, well not to give any spoilers but uh, yeah thanks for this one